Hello everyone and welcome back to another furniture flipping video. My name is Samuel with Cedar Pine Designs and in today's video I will be working on this nice seven drawer dresser with matching nightstands. It is a very beautiful piece but I think it just needs an update so let's jump straight into this one. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this dresser is in really good shape, there is no damage, it's made of solid wood, and the wood grain is very beautiful on this piece, but it is outdated, at least uh, for the finish it is, not the style, but it is outdated and it does need a facelift, and I want it to be able to match somebody's decor in their house, so I'm going to be painting this green. It's a darker green that I typically use on a lot of my pieces that you'll see me using later on in the video. Same steps as usual, I clean the piece, remove all the drawers and all the hardware so that I can get a good once over on everything and clean everything really well. For the top, I am using Clean Strips Premium Paint Stripper because this finish on the top is very thick and it's going to take a super long time to sand down. So I'd rather just remove most of it with this and then go over it with sandpaper later on in the video. The finish on this one didn't really scrape off, it more pulled up into like a, like a gooey ooze. So it was a little hard to work with, but there was a lot of finish that came off and it's going to make sanding a lot easier. I'm trying out this new Odorless Mineral Spirits by Clean Strips and I have to say it works just as good as the original, but it doesn't have a really strong smell, so that's a plus for me. So the hardware I planned on just polishing it out because I love that brass look, but the tarnish on this was super deep and I think that the brass was only plated because when I attempted to polish it did rub it off so I'm going to be painting that later on. Since the top is already stripped down, I'm using 150 grit sandpaper so that I can take it down to the bare wood and with this Festool Sander dust extractor and uh, their sanding pads all together. I mean, I really only have to use one or two sanding pads for this entire project. Probably, I think I got away with using just this one for the top since it was already almost stripped down. For the edge, I did have the chemical stripper spill over and it gave me high and low spots. So I had to really focus on those areas and hand sand them down smooth so that you didn't see it through the paint. A very important step that you don't want to skip is scuff sanding even if you plan on painting because you want to give the paint something really good to bond to so I'm using 150 to 220 grit sandpaper just to give everything a quick once over. Another thing that is super important with these pieces is the edges around the drawers um, especially if they touch the sides of the dresser I like to sand those down all the way down to bare wood because if you add paint on top of the finish that's already on it you may run into rubbing issues when you go to put your piece back together and it's gonna cause scratches and it's gonna cause a lot of issues with fitment this piece did have a lot of uh, faux character in it and what I mean by that is that it did have a lot of little dings and dents in it intentionally to give it a more weathered look and this is a period piece it is from the late 70s early 80s I did purchase this from the original owners here in the Bay Area and they bought it brand new from a furniture store so I left a lot of those imperfections in the top so that way you can see it after I wax it and give it a natural coating um, I think it looks really cool best way I found so far to tape the top off especially with all those curves is to use um, painters tape and a razor blade to cut all those lines and edges so that I get a crispy line after I'm done painting the body and I haven't found a way um, that's better than this one so far as I've mentioned before you want to be careful at the angle that you hold the razor blade at because you don't want to gouge or cut out any of that wood off the top another time consuming process is masking off all of these drawers but I feel if you're gonna do something do it right and I tape all of these off because before in the past I have gotten overspray and to clean all of that off of the drawers after the fact is a pain I'm using an oil based primer made by Zinzer and I'm using it on all the exposed wood portions because when you go to paint that it tends to look a little different from the spots that have finish um, so it tends to just soak up more of the paint so it looks a little drier 
And just to alleviate that, I use a little bit of hand primer. I'm using my favorite green called Shade Grown by Sherwin-Williams and I am mixing this with water so that it flows very smoothly through my HVOP spray gun because without it, it more so comes out really, really fine because you're not expelling enough material and you're going to be there all day. I'll do two to three coats of the green and typically my first coat is meant to give me a better idea of any imperfections that I may have missed when the item was brown because typically when it's brown, it's harder to see any kind of scratches or gouges. So first coat, let's check it out. During the paint process, you definitely want to wear a mask because an HVLP spray gun does expel a lot of material. So there's a lot of stuff floating around in the air. Scuff sanding in between each coat with 220 grit sandpaper definitely does give your paint a stronger bond between each coat and it is a step you do not want to skip. So right here I'm pouring more green paint because I want to tint my top coat. I'm using Verithane's water-based polyurethane with a satin finish. And typically, if it's too thick, I'll pour water in there, but this time everything worked out. I didn't have to add any water, so it's gonna spray out very well. Same process for the paint as I do for the top coat. I do two to three coats, but for this one, I use a 400 grit sandpaper so that way I can get a really smooth finish. And I move on to the handles. I'm spraying these gold. Um, there was no way to polish it out because it was just coming right off. So it's still going to look nice and fresh. Now that all the tape and masking paper is taken off the top, it does leave a little sticky film behind from the tape and whatever spots did get a little bit of overspray from the paint, I'm able to just sand all of that away using 220 grit sandpaper. Moving on to Howard's Feed and Wax to naturally wax the top with beeswax rather than staining it. Um, I think it's a really beautiful color and the green contrasted with that complement each other perfectly. Typically putting all the handles back onto a piece is one of my favorite parts because you get a look at how everything is going to turn out in the end. But for this piece, all of the drawers were angled in different directions so it made finding the right handles for the right spots very difficult. But in the end, I got it done and I started putting everything back together. Once everything was put back together, um, the steps for the nightstands that I don't show in the video are the same steps as the big dresser. I typically don't show those. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this piece turned out and I'm super excited about it. Me personally, I think the natural wood top with the gold handles on top of that green complement this piece perfectly. Now that we've made it to the end of the video, let's go over all the numbers on this piece and the profit that I made. Um, I did buy this piece with the nightstands for $150 and it was delivered so I had no travel costs. Um, all of the material I had in my stock, it was already paid for through some of my other projects, but I'll go ahead and say that there was about $30 on top of that, bringing me up to a total of $180. I do have this piece listed for $700, and due to being sick for the last week to week and a half, I haven't been able to show it, so I haven't been able to sell it. I'm hoping, now that I am better and feeling well, that I can get this piece pushed out. And I do have an update on my last piece that I did, the tan with the chevron pattern plywood on the front drawers. I wasn't getting a lot of interest in it when it was tan, so because I was already using green with this, I, I reshot it with a couple of coats of green. I swapped out the metal legs because I thought they looked a little thin for some nice solid natural looking wood legs. And I did sell it a couple of days later after posting it in the new green color for $550 plus $70 for delivery. Um, glad that piece is gone. I'm hoping to get these ones out next. Thank you guys for stopping by, watching my videos, and I can't wait to see you on the next one.